Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's LTC Minty here coming at you with a brand new video going over Get Fit Mining slash Move Quest. And uh, it took me a while to try to get this video together, and I'm trying to get this video done as quickly as possible, as there's just so much going on with this thing, and I just want to try to be able to cover everything and, um, and as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, no guarantees on that, you know. So, um, but before I get going on this video, you should take the time out to read disclaimer again in this video. If you did not do that, please go back and do so so we can understand what's going on this page at all times and uh, so that we can be on the same page. So that's it. Let's go ahead and get to this video. So this right here is based around the apps that pays you for doing activities that you do on a daily basis, right? The, the issue that I have with this is that it pays you out in their own tokens that has no use case. And uh, so... Even when I heard about Get Fit Mining a long time ago, I forgot when I first heard about Get Fit Mining, but I heard about it a while back. And uh, it was, you know, that was, that was the thing that I didn't like about it. I was like, if you're going to pay people out for the, the activities that they're doing on a daily basis, why not pay them out in dollars or USDT? Why you got to pay them out in your own made up, no use case tokens? And um, that's the issue that I had with Get Fit Mining right along with, you know, the... The referral system so now they're going to move quest and that's what we're going to mainly focus on although we're going to talk a, just a little bit about the past the tokens that they promoted as well um that no longer has any value so you can come here you can read over the move quest ecosystem which has a lot of con contradictions and red flags in this and i'll go over that and uh, you know, so like I said, you get you, they're, they're mainly focused on new quest token on, on Avalanche blockchain, and instead of uh, being on a Binance smart chain, which where they started on, and now they moved everything over to the, the Avalanche network. Don't make any sense to me. Binance smart chain has a very good network uh, blockchain, in my opinion, very cheap on gas fees, very fast as well. And um, you know, so I don't know why they just um, created a new token and just moved over to Avalanche network and left everything else on Binance smart chain. Don't make any sense to me. All right, so uh, you can get started with this thing for free. They do have apps on the Google Play Store and App Store, um, Apple Store as well. Uh, but you can get started for free with the Bob Miner. And the Bob Miner uh, has 20% mining power managed by the smart contract. Now, this right here is not mining, okay? That's another thing I had a uh, problem with because there, there is no instance at all that the so-called founder who, uh, who is Lynette has shown any warehouse office wherever the case may be of mining rigs been set up mining these uh, these tokens that she's creating out of thin air well she's not creating it she's paying somebody else to create them because she really don't know anything about blockchain technology and uh, you know, although she makes it seem like she knows what she's talking about but she she don't know what she's talking about blockchain technology as she got a lot of holes in a smart contract that she is clearly unaware of. Um, so, thing is, you can get started for free. And you get paid off running, walking, swimming. Uh, you know, you got to go and you actually got to do exercise at the gym. So, you got to uh, track that. You got to, uh, you can track your your sleeping time. All these different ways of getting paid. And it's just so much that you got to do in order to be able to earn the max on a daily basis, which is another red flag to me. You should not make it hard for people to be able to earn the maximum amount by completing all these activities every single day. That's just ridiculous. Now, I understand that it's like you don't have to complete them every day, but the only, the only way for you to earn the max is by, of course, investing the max that you can into this project, which I get into later on. And then you got to do all of the activities to the, to the fullest in order to earn the maximum daily payout. Okay. So now uh, you know what they're, they're talking about here, what, they, what they're claiming to be about. And uh, you come right to the contracts. These are the tokens that they um, have created. So Room, Get Fit, and GFAM all on the Binance Smart Chain Network. MoveQuest is the only one that's on the Avalanche blockchain. And um, the issue that I have uh, with this moving over, first of all, is that None of these uh, other tokens were worth anything except until they, they, they created MoveQuest. So you get over here to MoveQuest, you can see that this thing is crashing. It's dumping hard right now. Okay? And there's no slowing it down. The reason being, the, the, the contract don't make any sense. You have no lot liquidity. 
you have no way for people to be able to stake their uh, NQT tokens to pair it up with like USDT or maybe even other crypto uh, uh, tokens on the Avalanche blockchain to be able to establish liquidity. The owner don't have the liquidity locked in at all. Although she claims that the, uh, the smart contract is uh, buying up all of these, um, uh, you know, the, the, the MQT tokens being sold. But you come down to the transactions, you know, just like, look at all this being sold compared to buys. So that she's lying about that, and I'll show you that in the in the PDF document. Well, where she where where uh, you know she pretty much says what the smart contract is supposed to be doing, but it's not doing that. Okay. So now the other issue. Let's go over here to their Telegram community. This right here was, uh, was a conversation that happened back on October the first. Okay. So Harold Him asked the question: um, Is adding Avalanche to MetaMask the same thing? I can see Avalanche. And Kai in my get uh, in my get fit, but no coins or miners. How do I contact customer service? Well, there isn't one. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Uh, you know, so now this person uh, right here says, "Are you mining on the Avalanche chain?" And Harold Helmley responds, "I have six Omegas, GFAM, Room, Get Fit coins, but stuck on BNB. How to move to Avalanche? You know, I've been in this for a year, and uh, it used to be BNB." I mine on BNB and earn get fit room and G found. If you're only on the BNB network, you need to join again to start on the Avalanche network too. If you want on that chain, so he has to rejoin. Oh boy, reminds me of some other puns in the past where they went from one network to another network to another network, and it all ended up collapsing. They just kept getting more money out of the you know the uh, the investors. That that's what that's what's going on here. So Lynette and her so-called blockchain developer, they've gotten all this money from you guys. And then they took, you know, left pretty much the Binance Smart Chain and went over to Avalanche. Although she keeps on saying, we're going back to Binance Smart Chain to help those people there. How are you going to help them? How? You, you, it doesn't make any sense. It, it's already a lost cause over there. And instead of you going over there and helping them, Whichever, whichever plan that you 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 not explain on how you're going to help them, you're still not doing anything. You're talking about moving on to another blockchain. You know, so you're trying to move on from Avalanche to another blockchain with MoveQuest token. Don't make any sense at all. Okay? So, now, but what about all my coins, money I spent on all my submissions? Somewhere get fit switched over from BNB to Av um, uh, Avalanche and I got stuck. Is there a way to contact customer service? No, there is no customer service because they claim to only be run by a smart contract. Lynette has no office, you know, at all. There's no office for Get Fit Mining uh, to manage everything. There, there are no mining rigs set up or anything like that. She's keeping everything between herself and her so-called blockchain developer. And she even bragged about how they're able to keep the cost of operations at a minimum. I think it was like $50 per month, something like that website is crappy as well so she's a very cheap individual but she's taking in all this money from all of you guys all right so uh if i switch from get fit on bnb to avalanche will i lose all my miners and coins no uh, then um brian rose responds no your miners you bought are on the bnb chain you have to go and buy miners on the avalanche chain to mine there along uh, when uh with when other chains open we all have to go buy miners to uh, for those chains and mine there too uh, so just more money just coming out of your pockets in order for, uh, in order for you to make money so once avalanche has lost all its value with the mule quest token that's when they're gonna move to another blockchain network you know so that's how it works and uh, so what happened to my investment I started with get fit last year what happens to my coins I have I have um, can I convert them to MQT they originally had me on BNB when they did when, when, when did they change over to avalanche Seems unfair. I've been mining GFAM, Get Fit, and Room coins for a year now, and, and now they are worth nothing. So at some point, since I was in this early on, uh, was I supposed to have been able to switch over those other coins for MQT before Avalanche launch? Does anybody know? And is there a video that will explain to me how I keep my same account but switch over to Avalanche chain? And uh, so Brian Rose, I just started at the end of July. Only on the Avalanche chain, I heard Lynette talk about going back to the BSC chain. That's all it is, just talk. 
And um, it says you will only need your sponsor's activation code to, um, to link it. And, you know, so that means that you need to get, get back to your sponsor and get a new link on the new network, Avalanche, and you got to start all over again. What you did on the Binance Smart Chain does not gonna convert over or translate over to the Avalanche um, chain at all. All right. And it says, how do I find my sponsor's code? I can't reach them. And, um, you know, I need help from customer service. If I disconnect my wallet and connect the new one, well, I lose all my coins activity. You won't lose them. They just will continue to mine or, or not mine. You know, you're not, you're not mining anything because you got to report, you know, your activities to the smart chain, <laughs> you know, to the smart contract, I mean. So that does not mean that you're mining, you know, at all. That's not how mining works. And that was the last comment. And then they just pretty much did, uh, just ignored them after that. All right. And, you know, so when you look at actual mining, this is Bitcoin mining rigs. This is what I talk about that. Well, you know, where are the mining rigs at? Hooked up to computers and everything like that. You don't see any of that. That's how, she, you know, she's able to brag about having mining, you know, operations for the, uh, you know, get fit mining at like $25, $50 per month. So what are you mining? Absolutely nothing. So now you got a unregulated security in the NFT miners that she is having you guys buy that has not been regulated at all to be able to earn you a passive income by doing these activities and everything like that. You know, and, and you know, so she also does not, it's just like there's no mining going on, period. This, these are Bitcoin mining rigs right here. You can see how much they cost. Um, this right here, <coughs> excuse me, is that your rack space. You still need to buy all of the uh, Bitcoin miners. And you know, that's it. All of this equipment is not cheap. There, there are actual companies that exist in this world that have big, huge, I mean, huge Bitcoin mine operations, and they're not cheap to get up and going. Okay? You can see how much these things cost. This is uh, right now, I see on this page, this is the cheapest one I see. And you know, so when you're mining Bitcoin, you, you, you're, you're, you're participating in, in, um, in the mining blocks and there's no guarantee that you're going to get rewarded because you're not able to participate in all the mining blocks you know every time that there's a purchase of bitcoin every time that there's uh uh you know someone is changing from one crypto to bitcoin every time that there's a uh you know any type of transaction bitcoin it is up to the bitcoin miners around the world to participate and finishing up those mining blocks that's why bitcoin is so slow all right so the fact of the matter that they don't have any mining rig signed, set up for a big get fit mining just lets you know you're not doing any mining. So that's a scam. All right. You come back here to the MQT token. I want to go over this right here. You see that it's dropping. You come over here to the PDF document. And uh, they said that men to miners is an external process and takes place outside of the main ecosystem. This is important because it shows that the success of MoveQuest doesn't, doesn't rely on constant inflows of new money. Absolutely. You do depend on new flows. Uh, uh, new inflows of um, of money, okay? So unlike Pyramid or Ponzi schemes, this model ensures new participants are not funding earlier members. Instead, building a strong and active community is the foundation for long-term success, all right? Then you come right to the next page. Mining your with, uh, with POPA. You need miners to participate in the ecosystem and mine EQT through proof of physical activity. So you got report. Well, you got to report your physical activity on a daily basis, right? In order for you to get paid MQT tokens with these supposed uh, miners. Which, you know, they're, 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 these should be registered as securities, okay? Because, you know, it's one thing to be able to purchase an NFT um, and then be able to sell the NFT or something like that uh, for a hopeful, you know, a better, better return. But, you know, there, there are projects that, that requires you to buy NFT in order to invest with that project. And uh, so that way that you can get paid out from the, you know, and that investment as being like a shareholder of the company or something like that, that makes sense. But if you're saying that you are an NFT miner and you got these NFTs hooked up to miners, then that right there is a security violation because since you're not registered anywhere. Okay. So <clears throat> now you go back up here. It says that they're not a pyramid or Ponzi scheme. But you come right here. It says earn commissions by sharing the project with others, which allows you to earn commissions, helping the Spanish community and reward participants fairly. Now, I believe that every cryptocurrency project out there needs a community, a strong community. Because the cryptocurrency project is not going to succeed without a strong community. But you are allowing people to earn um, extra commissions from 
you have people using their referral links to recruit others. So you are a MLM Ponzi scheme. Okay. So it says that to support long term sustainability, uh, Minter Miners returns MQT tokens to the vault, ensuring a supply to, you know, for future mining through the year 2016 and beyond. You're not even going to last that long. All right. Because your, your smart contract is very insecure. Uh, so this mechanism contributes the, to the ecosystem sustainability for the long haul. And uh, matter of fact, many of us are not going to be alive uh, when 2060 come around. So how is it that you can say that? Oh man, just had to pause the video there. But uh, yeah, there's no there's no verification that MoveQuest is going to last for 2060. Uh, you know, to 2060. There's no guarantee that Bitcoin is going to be around at that time. Although we have all the faith in the world that Bitcoin isn't going anywhere, but we all understand that all of these cryptocurrencies can go to zero at any moment. They're, they're, they're not securities. Well, some, most of them are not securities. Some of them are securities. Like this right here is a security. <clears throat> MoveQuest is a security. Okay? If you don't know what a security is, go look it up. I know people are going to come to this video saying, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm ignorant. You know, like Crypto Pays Me Daily uh, came to one of, my, uh, one of my other videos that of another project that he's promoting. That's also promoting a registered uh, security. Saying that he's still bragging about making that he's still making money and with zero losses, you know, it's just like y'all gonna follow, you know, that that guy who is pretty much a scumbag, you know, and you know, and I got an issue with that, and I'm gonna show you why in this video, why he is a very bad person for you to follow and listen to. All right, so anyways, let's get down to this right here. They're saying that. Recycling MQT versus burning is better. No, it's not. Burning is gonna be uh, burning of crypto tokens or coins is a better method because it removes supply out of the market and, and to hopefully increase the demand. That's what BNB did. So when BNB launched on Binance Exchange, it gave away free BNB for everyone who decided to you know get to uh, to get involved with BNB. And they gave away it, they gave it away for free. And then what they do? They went on to burning a lot of BNB. And now BNB is one of the top five cryptocurrencies in the world. <clears throat> okay. So starting in 2060, previously distributed MPT that was returned to the vault from minting will be recycled and minted and mined again, re-entering uh, circulation. This recycling mechanism is preferred over token burning as it avoids artificially inflating the token's market value. And ensures long-term sustainability and availability of MQT. It is not, uh, you know, uh, uh, a manipulation, and it's not artificial. When you burn cryptocurrencies, it literally removes the supply of however, however much you burn from the market. So the, a lot of crypto enthusiasts love the, the idea of burning cryptocurrencies because it it, it it reduces the supply and it increases the demand. So it's like if they're burning these tokens, I need to go ahead and buy some right now because the value is going to go up for these tokens, uh, these these uh, these these uh, tokens, these coins. That's why burning is more acceptable than what they're claiming to do, recycle. I never heard of any cryptocurrency project recycling and be successful. If that was if there was a case, this is the first project I've ever heard of recycling, you know, you know, their tokens instead of burning. Don't make any sense. All right, so. Let's continue on down here, and uh, you know you got to use USDT to be able to get involved with MoveQuest. And then uh, when you buy these NFT miners, you got to pay even more USDT to evolve them or upgrade them to be able to earn more MQT tokens. All right, and uh, so where's this USDT going to? It's going directly to Lynette. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> uh, you know, just gotta think about all this stuff. So, uh, you know, to support MQT price by purchasing MQT from the market instead of selling it, the project avoids creating selling pressure, helping to maintain the token's value over time. The combination of increased mining power and rewards paired with liquidity boosting the effect of USDT ensures that both the user and the ecosystem benefit from the evolution process. The only one benefiting here are the scam influencers and Lynette. That's it. All right. So there are, um, there, there, there are no liquidity pools set up. There is no locked in liquidity. So, uh, you know, adding more liquidity strengthens the token stability and allows for smoother market operations. You see what's going on with the price. I already showed you. 
This thing got out to over $126 and now it's down to $36. Alright? And you know, so they you know they just like, well, uh, what what brand new token do you know of? You know, even Bitcoin, you know, went up in value and it dropped and went up in value and dropped. There's that you can't compare yourself to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is literally being accepted by financial institutions around the globe. Governments hold Bitcoin as well. Uh, you know, so you got big banks, you got companies that are buying into Bitcoin. You, they, these companies, governments don't care about MQT. You're not Bitcoin, so stop comparing yourself to Bitcoin. The only YouTuber that I know of that was telling the truth about MoveQuest, although he's involved with uh, MoveQuest, because he said it makes sense for him to get involved with as many fitness apps as possible that's paying him for the things he's doing every day anyway, was Jorge Vassal. Jorge Vassal said in this video, stop believing the hype that these promoters are talking about with MoveQuest. They're, they're, this thing is not guaranteed to be sustainable over a long period of time. It's something brand new. So them comparing it to Bitcoin don't make any sense. This is what Jorge Vassal said in his YouTube video. But instead of people finding Jorge Vassal, yes, he gets into uh, many opportunities, but he is 100% honest with you about them. He's not telling you that they're legacy platforms, that they're, they're going to be rich and all this other type of stuff. He tell you that it's shady as crap. Now, you know, he, he, used, he used curse words in this video. I don't curse. But he tell you that, you know, this way is shady. And, you know, even he said that MoveQuest is shady. So go back and check his video. Or go and check his video. Jorge Vassal. And Vassal, you know, you spell uh, Jorge Vassal. Hey, shout out to you, bro. <laughs> you, you know how we roll. So anyways, um... In addition to increasing mining power and rewards, Evolution has a critical role in managing liquidity within the MoveQuest ecosystem. This process is designed to protect the project from market manipulation, particularly from well trading and trading bots, while also enhancing the value equity for all holders. Now, I got an issue with that. And, you know, so I'm going to show you why I do not like Crypto Pays Me Daily, Quentin Bradford. So let me go and get to that information. All right, so right here in my Telegram community, I got a, a section for rug pulls and where I'm not investing. And I've had Get Fit Mining on my list for quite some time now. Um, you know, although I heard about Get Fit Mining for a long time ago, but once the uh, the the usual suspects start promoting this thing, I had to put it on my uh, you know my list of where I'm not going to invest. And uh, you can see I got a list up here pinned and everything like that as well. So people can see go back in history and see my list as it updates. And but anyways. This right here is Crypto Pays Me Daily, right here talking, uh, sharing this um, this information, right? It says 250K sell MQT from one of my direct referrals. Remember, the blockchain shows everything. We can see all addresses and I know who it was. Liquidity raise tokens were supposed to be held 90 days, not sold to hurt the community, even though it didn't hurt the community. It did. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> at the time they couldn't see it, but it did, you know, because like, what when when um the, the sale happened, the price shot back up, clear showing clear market manipulation of uh, the MPT token uh, price. All right, but anyways, who are you to tell people what to do with their money? I buy and hold and stake XRP. Who am I to tell or do a video trying to tell people when to sell and not to sell? Oh, if the price gets to $100, don't say the SRP. Hold it, hold it. Who am I? I'm not your daddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not your significant other. The only person that you should be listening to is the ones that you completely trust. Whether it's your parents, you know, a very close friend, your significant other, you know, your, your spouse. That's who you should be listening to. Not scam forces like Crypto Pays Me Daily or Quentin Bradford. You know, so this right here exposed his true colors. He's on. He's in this thing for himself. Although he tried to say that it's about the community, it's about him. Although, and he's making a whole lot of money in referral commissions, but he's greedy. You know, it's like, oh, we got a chance of being millionaires. No, none of you are going to become millionaires. Now, you can. You probably have a lot of MQT tokens, so you probably have made millions off of this because you got in early. But for all the people that got into this thing late, and I say late, I'm talking about $120, $100, $110, everybody, all those people are on losses. Even people that got in at $90, they're all on losses. The price of MQT is literally dropping. It's down at $36.
per token right now. But anyways, unfortunately, you have hurt your chances of winning big and really show your true colors. Greed is a real thing. People claim to be about community, but the real true colors always come out. You know, when it comes to community, you supposed to celebrate people's wins. Now, this person, this individual, ended up saying that he was not at fault. His wallet got hacked and he lost everything. I hope that wasn't the case. I hope that was a lie to cover up the fact that, you know, the, the, you know, to cover yourself for the fact that Crypto Pays Me Daily was attacking you and calling you out. I hope that you lied to save face. And I hope that you actually profited off of this major sale, which you see here. This is when the, the sale happened during this, uh, this, this drop and it went right back up, right? Showing you clear my market manipulation of the price of MQT. And then you come right here, you can see that over 250,000 tokens were sold and they were sold for almost $73 per token. I hope that you got your $250,000 out as much money as you invested into this thing. You, if you profited this right here, congratulations on you. I'm applauding you. Congratulate. That's how you're supposed to do it in these cryptocurrency projects. Is that this right here is just what you call a meme coin. If, if it is, it even qualifies for a meme coin. This right here is a meme coin. So what you do with meme coins, you get in early and you profit as soon as you can. So that way you're completely risk free. So if you sold your tokens, congratulations to you. And you now don't have to worry about anything else going forward because you already taken out your money and a whole lot more sitting pretty. So Quentin Bradford, shame on you. How, how dare you try to tell people what to do with their crypto. Now you got everybody losing. You, Ken Sultan, BOJ, Lynette, everyone that's telling everyone to hold on to their, their, uh, their tokens. Shame on y'all. You don't tell people what to do. Let them invest the, the, with their money how they see fit. Sell them, uh, sell their, their uh, tokens how they see fit. That's how the cryptocurrency space works. That's what, what a community does. If you think Lynette... And Lynette keeps on claiming that it's healthy to see that the value of MPT is going down. Why is it that Quentin Bradford cares so much about people selling their, their tokens? If Lynette doesn't care, let the price drop. That's what, that's what I say about it. So anyways, getting back uh, to this right here. Like this, there's another thing I want to go over. Uh, let's go here. And let me see. So, the, the liquidity or removal uh, to, to manage oversold MQT. During evolution, the project can remove liquidity from the pool when MQT becomes oversold. This prevents excess tokens from flooding the market and stabilizes the token's price. Number two, re-injecting liquidity with MQT buybacks. USDT from this liquidity removal is used to buy MQT from the market, reducing the circulating supply. Once the MQT is purchased, the project then re-injects liquidity into the pool at strategic moments. This helps maintain a stable market and prevents large fluctuations due to overselling. So, like I said, earlier on in this video, I said I was going to show you the, the issue with that, right? Where is it that the contract is buying back every sale? I don't see that. Look, look at, um, let's go to this, right? Look at this. Someone sold over 12 MQT. Where's the buyback at of that same amount? There's a buy right here to over two MQT. Then you have more sales. There's a buy of two over two uh, MQT, uh, uh, you know, again. Then you have more sales. Look at this buy. So where is it that the contract is absolutely buying up everything that's being sold on the market to be held in the vault and then redistributed in a later uh, time? It's not happening. If that was the case, the price wouldn't be dropping. Think, people. It's not illegal to think. The price wouldn't be dropping if the smart contract was doing what it said it was supposed to be doing, which is buying up all the equity that's being sold in the market. The value of the equity should be going up sky high right now still. So Lynette is lying to all of you. Right along with the scam influencers. Alright, so now... 
you, you see this right now you see that right there this is uh, the update so it cost you, you, you know, fifty dollars to get in with the Lenny miner that's the basic miner then you got to evolve it from there to get up to the maximum of the Omega miner all right so they got these new prices and a new mining power and all this other type of stuff and uh, you know so it costs fifty dollars to evolve the Lenny miner up to the primary miner then it costs a hundred dollars to involve the the, uh, the primary miner to the ultra miner. Then it costs uh, um, one hundred twenty five dollars to upgrade from the ultra miner to the alpha. And then what it don't have here is the price to upgrade alpha miner to the omega miner. But I'm gonna get to that right now. <clears throat> when you look at this, it costs eight hundred dollars to upgrade from the alpha <clears throat> to the omega. So. In order for you to get the maximum NFT miner, I just saved you the math. You got to spend twelve hundred dollars minus, you know, not, not even including the gas fees on Avalanche blockchain. The the gas fee is not expensive, but everything that you do is there's a gas fee. There's a gas fee to connect your wallet to the smart contract. There's a gas fee to create your uh, you know your username. There's a gas fee to create your referral link. There's a gas fee to buy, uh, you know, the, the first NFT miner. There's a gas fee to dock each NFT miner in all these all uh, these these docks. They said the eight slots. There is a gas fee to upgrade from each miner to you know to the next one. So this is a very very expensive and complicated project. This is the reason why it took me so long to get to this video and this why this video is so long as well because there's so much information to go over. And the fact of the matter is that they're scamming you. Lynette sitting back collecting all of this USDT. You know, so the, the smart contract is supposed to be bought by MQT, which is not doing. And then you spending all this USDT to upgrade or evolve your miners. What is USDT going to? It's going right to Lynette. She's the contract owner, supposedly, right? The person with the shadiest past all of a sudden is, is, is in control of a cryptocurrency project. And you know, so you come ready to get fit mining on uh, the review from uh, you know behind MLM, Lynette Arton. She was charged, you know, she had to, she she was uh, forced to have to pay back people that she scammed from you know people she was involved in the clawback. She was in Zeke Rewards Ponzi scheme. Uh, what else was she involved in? Uh, I know he's updated his article so many times because get this right he was originally created back on April 17th when get fit mine was just on the originally on the um, binance smart chain but you know she had she was involved in three or four Ponzi schemes in the past that all collapsed that was also questioned in the crypto Ponzi scheme Avenger YouTube video and you can go check this video out and you know yes yeah, she owned up to her past and everything like that and said that people should uh, have a redo but it's like how is it that you was promoting just regular Ponzi's that didn't involve crypto at all, pretty much? And now all of a sudden you become this blockchain expert and then you accuse people who are, who are against your get fit mining move quest opportunity of saying that they don't know what they're talking about. You have no idea what you're talking about. Blockchain experts has already debunked your smart contract as being very insecure. Then you know that there, there's, there, there's nothing valid about what get fit mining and move quest is doing blockchain experts already said that and you had a blockchain expert in this video right here that was calling the smart contract out questioning the smart contract and responses was very shady at best that's why i put it okay so anyways you can see right here she was involved in the clawback with zeke rewards she had to pay back money from people that she scammed all right and um you know so now you get down to get fit mining you got to uh you know we got to report your activity on a daily basis in order to earn mqt if you're mining all this should be done passively like the app that i'm no longer a part of it pays out usdt i'm actually using the virtual debit card right now to make online purchases it pays out in dollars not usdt it pays out in us dollars okay and it tracks all of my it, it tracked all my activity automatically. I didn't have to report nothing. You gotta report your, your activity daily to get fit mining slash move quest. That's not mining, people. Mining is hands-free, it's passive. It should not have to require you to report anything. Alright? 
So now you kick down here, and it said that they're not MLM Ponzi, but you're paying you 11 levels deep. How is this sustainable? 25% on the first level, 5% on the second level, 4% on the third level, 3% on the fourth, uh, fourth and fifth levels, then you get 2% on level 6 and 7, then you get 3% on, on level 8, which don't make any sense at all, because uh, it's higher than level 6 and 7. Then you get levels 9 through 10, it's getting 5%, which is the same thing as level 2, which don't make any sense at all. Then level 8, uh, level, uh, level 11 is 8%. And from what I heard, they're not changing the, the you know the referral structure at all, the MLM's uh, punji structure at all, even when they go into Move Quest. And I know that they're trying to come out with a new app, and they're talking about they, they're testing the app and everything like that. The thing is, they're gonna have issues with launching the app on Apple, uh, play uh, on Apple Store because Apple does not allow apps to launch with an MLM structure. And you know, so and then they say after they launch this app, they're gonna have some type of event. And Las Vegas. I hope you do. You're gonna put more eyes on, on you from the security regulators, and you're gonna start receiving fraud warrants. All right. So that right there wraps up what I want to talk about about get fit minus slash move quest. This is a Ponzi. This is a scam. Paying you out in a worthless, no use case token called M Move Quest token, and they just completely abandoned everybody else on the Binance Smart Chain to move to Avalanche Network with a Move Quest token. That is now collapsing in value. I was just saying that was at $36. This thing is still going down. This is the daily candle. Let's look at this thing on an hourly candle. Look at this thing. Look at look at this. It's just dropping. You know, there they have instances where it just buy it just jumps back up, but it's gonna come all the way back down. Look at this. It does it constantly. Goes up, then comes back down all the way. Goes up, and now it's starting to come back down again. But <clears throat> you know, you want to listen to those scam influencers like Quentin Bradford. AKA Crypto Pays Me Daily, as he always like to say. You know, the consultant who uh, goes by the name of consultant, you know, <laughs> well, you should, should call yourself Can Scammer. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you know, I, I followed them, them into another project, which was the last straw with me following Quentin Bradford and Can Sultan into a project where I lost thousands of dollars. And they end up as a scammer, everyone. You know, these guys made a killing off referral commissions. And everything like that they may have lost money as well but they made a killing of referral commission still before that thing co completely collapsed now i'm going to talk about it you know because it's, it's not even it's not even worth the time right so that right there wraps up what i want to talk about if you like what you heard and saw please like subscribe to the channel sorry about this video being so long but you can see there was so much information to go over to really get you to understand what is really going on here all right in a way that these scam influencers and Lynette will not explain to you. All right. So uh, that's all to say. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time in this video. Take care, everyone.